Hello, Oscillator Sync here. This little artifact here is Ovum from Crow's Electro Music, a small company from Vancouver, Canada. And it's an instrument that I've really been enjoying recently. And um, I want to share it with you. This video is not sponsored. I bought this with my own money and the only contact that I've had with Crow's Electro Music was to ask them who their um, retailers were in the UK. But um, I'm keen to try and shine a light on interesting instruments from smaller makers. And uh, this certainly is an interesting instrument, at least to me. Let's give it a little bit of reverb, why not? There we go. And in this video, I want to introduce what Ovum is on a technical level, but also how I've been enjoying using it. And how you might enjoy using it. So, let's talk about what we have here. So, Ovum is conceptually a really simple instrument. It's basically five things repeated. Each of these uh, columns here represent one of five voices. And each of these voices have a slider which gives us volume for that voice. We have a pitch knob here, which allows us to change the pitch of the voice freely. It's unquantized, just knob to pitch uh, control. This toggle switch here allows us to switch between two different waveforms, a triangle wave, which is the core of the oscillator, and also a square wave. This knob at the top is a tone control, which is a simple low pass filter. And you can hear even with the triangle wave that there's a good bit of fluff on top of that fundamental for us to filter off. The range of the pitch uh, goes down sub audio where we get clicks on the square wave up to that pitch there. Of course, the fun comes when you start to combine different frequencies, and because everything is freely tunable, we can find interesting in between tones where we can hear the interaction of the different voices. And although it's fun to play with it solo as kind of a sound toy, I guess, it's certainly a device which likes to play well with others. So, for example, adding some reverb immediately brings us into a lovely space for these different voices. And it's also absolutely lovely to 
to add some overdrive to because overdrive or distortion always emphasizes the differences between uh, voices so while we're on the subject of smaller makers this is the accomplished badger from frederick effects this is the mark one there's a, a even better mark two one it's pretty much my favorite drive for electronic instruments and when we bring in the drive the relationships between yes the different voices become more obvious things become dangerously blissful or frighteningly discordant Although it's fun to use it, just on its own to create these lovely drones, I found it particularly gratifying to pair with other instruments. So for the bulk of this video, that's what I want to show you, some pairings that I found enjoyable. With Ivan. This is the Wingy 2 from Menki. A uh, instrument that probably deserves its own video, if I'm being honest. Uh, it is a digital stereo resonator. At the moment, we're just hearing the dry sound from Ovum, albeit with a healthy dose of reverb, of course. But if we bring up the mix on Wingy, we should be able to start to hear some of those resonances. And because we have these freely tunable voices, On the oven, we can really go and search out the various resonances. And because it's in stereo with different resonators on each side, Provides a lovely spread. Uh, this oscillator is currently set up on the square wave and down in the clicks, so this should excite all the resonances all at once as it pings them.
which is right, rather lovely. I've got the um, version 3 firmware on Wingy here, which allows me to access the alternative tunings in this particular mode. I think this is the well-tuned piano temperament. It's rather haunting. And if we go full wet on Wingy, so we're pretty much just listening to the resonators at this point, we can kind of strum them by detuning and retuning. The voices. Having very small movements we can find. It's lovely. Sometimes slightly dangerous resonances. It's a rather lovely time. It is quite meditative and kind of the, a combination you can really get lost with. There's Ovum on its own. And there are those slightly dangerous Resonances. Yes. A lovely time. We live in a world where we've literally never had better access to high quality sample libraries paid for free, instantly downloadable. And it's a wonderful thing if you want to work with samples on a sampler. However, there's something extremely satisfying about sampling something that is new and using a sound that literally has never been used by anyone else ever because you've just recorded it. Um, and the over makes for a really lovely kind of sample fodder. So let's sample a couple of things. Um, uh, let's get rid of that. And um, what I've got here is just a square wave on every single oscillator, all tuned to the same note to make the fattest super square in the world ever. And let's just grab a few seconds of that, maybe probably four or five seconds will do. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Uh, turn all those back down and we will save that. Yeah, well, terrible sample management. I'll stick it on uh, eight, that'll be fine. Cool. And there we go, we have a square, super square there. So, mm, 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 mm. Maybe shape that a little bit with an envelope. Give it a 
the filtering. A reverb. A vibe drive. make a hi-hat so we'll just get a bunch of triangle waves all tuned high and then detune them Please, don't need much of it because I'm going to be short. And yeah, we'll keep, we will uh, keep that and we'll stick it on closed hats. make a kick drum so we'll just grab uh, go away oops go away two too low tuned Triangles with teaching between them. Uh, yes, please. That will do. And yes, I want it. Yes, we can call it that. And I want it there, please. And we'll bring these frames back up. And then. building up a track which is all of our own because no one else has these samples because I've just made them. I'll put one last thing on, let's uh, maybe like a um, chord or something.
Yeah, so we've got our very own samples from the OVM that literally have never existed before. And that's always so much fun. Bit of sample. Sample redux just to get some of that woodiness in there, that's nice. And we can go on and build a whole track just using samples from the OVM if we wanted to. Of course, other instruments are available to sample from. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to sit and play with this for a bit longer. I'll let the video transition to something else. So we should take a brief moment out from exploring the sounds just to talk about the build and the I.O. Uh, firstly, what's probably not obvious from this sort of top down view is that uh, most of the unit is actually made out of reclaimed wood um, with rounded edges here. The top panel, I believe, is aluminium. It certainly looks that way uh, from the side. Uh, the um, knobs and sliders, the knobs feel good. They have a nice um, deceleration on them. Uh, the switches are... Well, they're mini toggle switches, so you know, they feel like mini toggle switches. Uh, the sliders are not the smoothest in the world. They're certainly not unpleasant. They do have a bit of wobble as well, but then sliders almost always do. Um, I'm not particularly worried about them uh, in normal use, but um, in terms of the, the overall look and aesthetic, I, I really, really like it. Taking a look at this uh, top panel here, uh, we've got a volume control just on a slidey pot here we have our output which can also drive headphones uh, so it will uh, push out a left and a right signal uh, so just be aware that if you plug in a trs jack into here and plug into a balanced input you might have uh, issues in terms of the signal dropping out same way as you do with volkers and the power is on usb type c so although it doesn't have a battery inside of it you can power it off a USB power bank and the power requirements are pretty low so it should last a good while. I guess if there was a main reason that I wanted to pick up the Overm it's this and that is to use it as a sidecar oscillator bank for the Lyrate. The Lyrate obviously is a wonderful synth for drones and ambient music and experimental music and part of it's fun and why it's an enjoyable instrument is that it has an element of unpredictability to it the way that everything interacts is uh, chaotic in a way and um, sometimes in the patches I made I was kind of left without something to hold everything together and so I thought the oven would be perfect to introduce something a little bit more controlled and static to hold everything together. combine the chaos with something a little bit more controlled. If I needed that.
because it's going in through the external inputs, it's still able to take advantage of the delicious distortion, uh, the self mode on the delay. So we are actually affecting the modulation of the delay by putting stuff in on the over here, which is always fun. I think if you own a Lyra, it could well be that the oven would be a very good friend. The Ovum is fundamentally a bunch of oscillators in a box, so if you have a synth with a number of oscillators and an audio input like the monologue does, or an external input as it's sometimes called, uh, and we want to add some oscillators to the synth, we can do that with the Ovum, especially if we're interested in introducing a static pedal tone which allows us to establish harmonic ideas. There's a nice bass note in there that's staying static against the melody. That's what we'll add a high note in. Just add a little twangy thing happening in there. Another chord tone. And because it's going into the audio input, it's being affected by the VCA and the filter. And we can mess with the tone control just to dial some of them back into the background. using the uh, square wave and all of them here, but we could try the triangle as well. A bit more chilled out. But it blends really nicely with what's going on inside the synth already. right but it's a nice way to add these pedal tones to a uh, patch Adding pedal tones to another synth. 
definitely an option. I suspect that in many ways the ovum is somewhat of a divisive instrument and you probably decided very early on in the video whether it was something that was interesting to you one way or another. If you decided that it wasn't and if you've made it this far into the video, your objections are almost entirely, I suspect, practical. Ovum is unconventional, it doesn't have a conventional playing surface, there is no keyboard, there is no sequencer, uh, there's no LFOs, there's no uh, envelopes. And if you need those things to create the music that you want to create, then Ovum is not right for you and you are absolutely valid in those views. I think similarly a lot of those criticisms are probably for the people that think that it is an interesting instrument the things that are kind of turning them onto it the fact that you have an unconventional playing surface that is not like most other keyboarded instruments the fact that you can tune the voices independently to find these interesting interactions you know, these are all of the things that you're probably thinking are the cool things about this instrument you know and both views are absolutely valid and they and how blessed are we to be living in a time where electronic instruments of such variance are available to us and in the case of the Overmut relatively inexpensive prices The final thing I kind of want to talk about is that um, uh, although this isn't a, a review, that's not my intention, uh, I am aware that at this point there are probably some people who are thinking, yeah, this is something that I would like to take a look at and maybe purchase. And uh, to that end, I want to make sure that I give it a fair shake and um, level some criticisms where they are deserved, I think, um, so that you don't feel misled by anything that I've shown you in this video. Now, nothing I'm going to talk about, in my opinion, is a reason not to grab one of these, but I just want people to be aware of these things. And the main criticisms all sort of sit in the tuning of the instrument. This knob in particular. So we have a fairly wide frequency range on this knob and this knob is really quite small and as a result finding particular pitches with accuracy can sometimes be a little bit tricky. But what's slightly worse is that if you're not careful when you even remove your hand from the knob, see, I, I've been practicing, so I've got good at not doing it. Yeah, when you remove your hand from the knob, just the act of removing your hand because of the tension in your fingers along this small control, you can nudge it out of tune as you let go. And in the heat of a performance, In the heat of a performance, that might... <laughs> See, he's doing it now, of course. In the heat of a performance, that might not be... In the heat <laughs> of a performance, that might not be... Oh, it certainly isn't a desirable uh, thing. Um, the other thing when it comes to the tuning is, although it has a wide range, I actually don't find that the top end of the knob is necessarily as high as I might like. Um, maybe like to go a little bit higher so you can get those sort of squealing intermodulations between different notes. Um, to that end, I'd like to um, to offer into the ether some suggestions for the ways that I think the oven could be elevated. Uh, and maybe I can manifest an Ovum V2 
just by saying these things out loud. So the first thing when it comes to the pitch, I think it would be great if there was a range control and you could switch the pitch between a low and a high range, essentially halving what this knob has to do, giving you more accuracy and less um, likelihood of a small nudge pushing it out of tune in a, in a meaningful way. I think that would be a worthy addition to make it a more performable instrument. Uh, beyond that, there are some sort of timbral things that I think would, again, elevate it. And I recognise that any sort of addition to an instrument like this is going to increase the bill of materials. It's going to make it more expensive. Um, so, you know, take all of these things with a pinch of salt. The first is that in pretty much all of my favourite situations where I've been using it, it's been in conjunction with something providing distortion. So either a distortion pedal or, for example, the distortion on the Lyra or on the Syntact. And as I showed right at the start of the video, having a distortion combined with these uh, slightly detuned oscillators really enhances what's going on between the oscillators. And that creates these really beautiful and sometimes fragile or dangerous textures. So I think there being a built-in distortion or just a simple clipping circuit on the output could really elevate what you could do with the instrument from a timbre perspective. And I think that one would maybe be a, a smaller technical hurdle to overcome. The two other things that kind of spring to mind would be it would be great if there was intermodulation between the different voices. I recognise that that's quite a jump in the feature set and what I'm essentially asking for is a tiny little Lyra 8. But, you know, if you say these things out loud, they might happen. Some form of cross-modulation, whether that's ring mod or FM, I think would be a really interesting thing. Uh, and finally, it would be great if there was panning. Yeah, you know, I love anything in stereo. And if we had panning on the different voices, or even on some of the voices, and had a stereo output, again, it would it would elevate what you could do with it. But that's a big jump in terms of what you would have to deal with to build the instrument. So again, that's an increase in the price, which might not be desirable. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little exploration of an interesting little audio artifact. I've put the details for Crow's Electro Music in the video's description. So if you want to check it out, then you can easily find it. Otherwise, as always, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, take care.